Hi everyone, this is Josh McCoy. I'm a fourth year medical student at the Loma Linda University School of Medicine, and this is a lecture on thyroid ultrasound for the family medicine clerkship. In this lecture, we're going to cover just the very basics of thyroid ultrasound with emphasis on evaluating a new nodule. We are going to cover how to perform the scan, the basic anatomy that you'll encounter during the scan, and characteristics of benign versus malignant nodules. Before we dive in, I want to give credit to Dr. Stuart Bernard and Dr. Claire Richardson. Some of the information in this lecture was adapted from lectures that they delivered to us students here at Loma Linda. Okay, so there are a lot of reasons ultrasound might be utilized to image the thyroid, but the main indication that we will cover is the initial evaluation of a nodule. So, someone comes to you in the office reporting a new lump in their neck, and you want to look at it in order to evaluate whether this person needs further workup, like an FNA, or if they can be monitored. So, why is this important? Well, thyroid carcinoma is the most frequent type of endocrine cancer in the United States. However, it only accounts for less than a percent of cancer deaths, and the majority of nodules are benign. In one study, 50% of patients with clinically normal thyroids had nodules at autopsy, and ultrasound can detect nodules that are around as small as a millimeter. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the prevalence of nodules in the general population is high, ultrasound is very effective at identifying nodules, but most nodules are benign with only a small subset being malignant. So being good physicians and not wanting to submit patients to unnecessary and potentially harmful testing, we want a methodology to walk through to help decide whether the patient can be monitored or whether they do indeed warrant uh, further and immediate testing. So when you scan the thyroid, you want to use a linear probe. The thyroid is a superficial structure, and the high frequency of this probe will get you good image resolution. The patient should be in a supine position with their neck extended, and it may help to place a pillow under the patient's shoulder blades to enhance neck extension and positioning. This can be really useful in patients with a shorter neck. So you start the scan with the probe right above the sternal notch. Remember, the probe, should, the probe indicator should be to the patient's right when in the transverse plane and towards the patient's head when in the longitudinal plane. Uh, in order to visualize the entire thyroid, it will probably be necessary to slide the probe laterally and fan cranially and caudally. So here's a look at the thyroid in a transverse plane. Usually your probe won't have this big a footprint, but this image is helpful for orienting ourselves with the major structures. So midline here, we have the thyroid isthmus, uh, and then the left and right lobes. Remember, indicator is to the patient's right, and here's the indicator on the screen. So this is the patient's right side. So we have the right and left lobes posterior to the isthmus. We have the trachea and the esophagus, often described as a, having a bullseye appearance because of the lumen with the surrounding musculature. Then laterally, we have the common carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, then some of our neck muscles, the strap muscles, and the sternoclinomastoid. So here's a look at a more realistic look at what you might see when you scan the thyroid. And if you slide just to the patient's left, here again is the anatomy. You have your trachea, the left lobe of the thyroid, your common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and then your superficial strap muscles and the SCM. So drawing our attention back to the thyroid gland, notice how normal thyroid tissue has one homogeneous echo texture. This is important because we're going to identify pathology as change from this normally uniform medium level echogenicity, which you see all throughout here in your gland. So a uh, patient comes into the office complaining of a nodule. We get out the ultrasound machine, and sure enough, there it is. We see a disruption of the normal homoechogenicity right here. 
So what characteristics of a nodule can tell us whether it is safe to send the patient home or whether they need immediate further workup? In other words, how do we tell if a nodule is malignant or benign? So there are no characteristics that are diagnostic for benign or malignant nodules. This is a really important point. Um, however, there are a number of features that have been shown to be more suggestive of one or the other, especially when they are found in combination. So to begin with, features that suggest a benign nodule is that it is anechoic or hyperechoic. It has peripheral calcifications. It has a positive halo sign. It has a heterogeneous composition. It has peripheral vascularization or it is less than a centimeter in size. And remember, none of these guarantees that a nodule is benign, but when you have several, it is suggested. Features associated with malignancy, if the lesion is hypoechoic, if it has punctate microcalcifications, an absent halo sign, a solid composition, intranodal vascularity, or greater than two centimeters in size. So here's a table with the test characteristics of several of these features. Just notice that the presence of microcalcifications has the greatest specificity for malignancy. A more recent study published in JAMA indicated that the presence of microcalcifications, nodule size greater than two centimeters, and a solid con consistency were the top three indicators of potential malignancy. And that correlates fairly well to the previous table. So let's start with echogenicity, since this is probably the first feature that will clue you into the presence of a nodule. An anechoic or a hyperechoic pattern suggests a benign nodule, whereas a hypoechoic pattern suggests a malignant lesion. And this echogenicity of the nodule is comparing it to the normal echo, te echo texture of normal thyroid tissue. So here we see an anechoic nodule. It looks almost like a blood vessel because inside it is just mostly black. This is probably a little bit of reflection and there's really not much echo texture at all. This suggests a benign nodule. Here we have a hyperechoic nodule. You can see that it is clearly brighter than the surrounding thyroid tissue and this also may suggest a benign lesion. Now here on the other hand, we have a hypoechoic nodule. You can see that it is clearly darker than the surrounding thyroid tissue out here, but it is not anechoic like the common carotid or the internal jugular lateral to it. This hypoechoic echotexture is concerning for malignancy. Moving on to microcalcification, microcalcifications. These show up as hyperdense on the ultrasound machine. A peripheral pattern, often referred to as eggshell calcifications, is characteristic of many benign lesions, whereas a more internal punctate pattern without shadowing is concerning, and remember, one of the most specific characteristics of malignant nodules. So here's a nodule in the left lobe, and you can clearly see an eggshell patterned hyperdensity surrounding the nodule. This is suggestive of a benign lesion. Not quite as smooth as that last image, but still you see a peripheral calcification pattern in this nodule, along with some shadowing, which shows up right down here. Again, this is suggestive of a benign lesion. So here we have a hypodense nodule in the left lobe that is studded with punctate hyperdense lesions that are not confined to the periphery. This is very concerning for a malignant nodule and this patient should receive further testing. The halo sign. This refers to a hypoechoic or anechoic rim surrounding a nodule. Its presence is often characteristic of benign nodules, whereas its absence can be concerning for malignancy. Pretty simple. So this nodule lies in the right lobe, just medial to the carotid, and we can clearly see here a hypoechoic 
rim completely surrounding the nodule. And that's suggestive of a benign lesion. Here, on the other hand, we have a mess. This nodule is hypoechoic, has punctate lesions, and there is no halo sign. So this is very concerning for a malignant nodule. Next is composition. What we are really concerned about is whether the nodule is completely solid, often a characteristic of malignant nodules, or if it is not. Here we see a nodule on the right lobe of the thyroid with a cystic appearance with numerous septations. This is often referred to as a honeycomb pattern and suggests a benign lesion. This nodule, however, is very clearly solid. There's a small point of hypoechogenicity here in the center. This very well may be the vessels that are feeding this nodule. And this pattern is concerning for malignancy. And finally, we'll discuss vascularity. A peripheral pattern of vascularity suggests a benign lesion, whereas an internal or intranodal pattern is suspicious for a malignant nodule. You can visualize vascularity by using the color or power Doppler settings on the ultrasound machine. So here's a nodule with color Doppler, and we see the carotid and the internal jugular vein lighting up laterally. But as for the node itself, it has very little internal vascularity. The majority seems to be concentrated here around the periphery. And this pattern suggests a benign lesion. Here, however, with power flow Doppler, we see a much more internal pattern of vascularity with this nodule. Uh, it has vessels that are penetrating throughout and this is a pattern concerning for malignancy. So those are just some of the characteristics that can help determine whether a patient needs, say, an FNA, or if they can just be monitored. I want to mention that any time that you evaluate a nodule, as a sonographer, you need to include these three components in the description. The location of the nodule within the thyroid gland, the size in three dimensions, and we only briefly mention this, but this is easy to accomplish using the calipers on your ultrasound machine. And then, of course, the characteristics of the nodule, many of which we just covered. So that is it for now. Happy scanning, and don't forget, start at the sternal notch.